Right, nine red flags you need to be aware of when choosing an insolvency practitioner. So if you're watching these videos, it's highly likely you're a UK business owner and your business has started to struggle. So you may be thinking, right, I need to go and find an insolvency practitioner because if you liquidate a business in the UK, you need an insolvency practitioner. So here are some red flags I want you to watch out for when choosing an insolvency practitioner. Red flag number one, they're not willing to offer you any advice without paying for paying them first okay red flag number two they say something like this right mr worden you qualify for an insolvency here's my invoice for four grand plus vat when can you pay it they don't know enough about they do not know enough about your situation to be quoting you a price so early Red flag number three. They speak to you like a naughty schoolboy or naughty schoolgirl. And honestly, most people I deal with who have to go into liquidation, they're going into liquidation through circumstances, things happening. A lot of it's not down to them. So you want somebody who's speaking with you with respect, empathy, and giving you some time. So if they're speaking to you like a naughty school boy, a naughty school school girl, perhaps time to find another one. Point number four. They won't put anything in writing. So why don't they put anything in writing? I'm going to offer a idea. If they won't put anything in writing, it might be because the goalposts are going to change when you go into liquidation. So there's some great insolvency practitioners out there. And I'll tell you what a really good one does is they listen to you attentively, sympathetically. They ask lots of questions. They understand your position in full. They check for overdrawn loan accounts. They check for misfeance claims. They perhaps do a bank analysis before you sign the papers and they give you a full proposal of what's going to happen, how much it's going to cost and how you're going to pay for it. So if they're not willing to put anything in writing, again, it's perhaps time to find another one. Point number five, they don't mention this question. Sir, madam, have you got any overdrawn director's loan accounts? If they don't mention that, that's a red flag to me because a high majority of directors I speak to today have overdrawn loan accounts. And very, very simply, it means when you've taken too much money out of the company. If I I explain it like this, when you're making a profit, you take a dividend, your accountant declares a dividend at the end of the year and you pay your tax on that dividend and you get on with your life. But if your business is not making a profit, but you're still taking those dividends, your company cannot afford to pay the dividend, which means in insolvency, it gets converted to an overdrawn director's loan. So you've got to check if you've got an overdrawn director's loan account. And if they're not mentioning it to you, that's a red flag to me. Okay, you must check whether you have one, how much it is and what you're going to do about it if you go into liquidation. Red, one, two, three, four, five. Red flag, number six. Even though they know that you have inflated your your turnover on the application for a bounce back loan, they tell you not to worry about it. No, bad advice. If you've inflated your turnover on the bounce back loan application, you've committed bounce back loan fraud and um, what are the consequences of bounce back loan fraud well listen in the most serious cases it's been prison you know criminal records disqualification personal liabilities but there's nothing about you inflating your turnover for a bounce back loan that deems a response of there's nothing to worry about and i've heard that i've heard that this week so, yeah, you want an insolvency practitioner who tells you, tells you the bad stuff, you know. We'll tell you what you 
need to hear, not what you want to hear. Point number seven. They don't answer your questions straight. You know, if I ask you a straight question, I deserve a straight answer. And if a lot of the time when you're speaking to them, it's, you know, it's it's like talking to a diplomat, you know, or a politician where they're just dodging and bobbing and weaving and you're not getting straight answers, red flag, perhaps it's time to look for someone else. Um, point number eight, tip when you're choosing an insolvency practitioner. If they're frightening you to so you act fast... Um, and scaring you to death, I don't like that tactic and it causes me concern because if they're pushing you down the road of insolvency, and don't listen, there's a caveat here, right? If you're insolvent, you must take insolvency advice and you must act fairly promptly. But the stuff you need to check before you get rushed down to sign the papers, you need to... Take a breath, okay? And you need to look at things like bounce back loan issues, overdrawn director's loan account issues, preference payments, intercompany loans, all the stuff that I've done hundreds of videos on, which you can, by all means, go and check out the First Business Rescue YouTube channel. But if you're getting rushed into signing liquidation papers without these details being checked, red flag, perhaps time to look for someone else. And finally, point number nine, um, the ninth tip of you, helping you to choose the right, uh, ninth red flag when looking for insolvency practitioners. They say stuff like, we'll deal with that down the line, sir. No, no, no. If you deal with something down the line, it's almost certainly going to cost you more money, you more pain, you more worry. All things can be dealt with up front. And what am I talking about? What things may be dealt with down the line? Have you made any preference payments? Are you going to be accused of misfeance? Have you made any intercompany loans to other companies that need paying back? Have you got an overdrawn director's loan account? So I hope you found these red flags useful um, and I hope they stop you from making a mistake. Um, and, and listen, I want to finish on this. There are some bloody good insolvency practitioners out there and the good ones do the opposite to what I've just told you. Have a great day and see you soon. Bye-bye.